uh, thinking of random mnemonics gets more difficult because you can you have less associations for the sounds that you might find in the word or you might have to take it into account that there's also a tone to go with it or there are a lot of uh, words that essentially have the same structure like in the Semitic, uh, Semitic languages so uh, basically it makes a lot more sense to uh, work with affixes and to understand what's going on on a more basic level and use that in order to build your vocabulary and uh, in this presentation I will be giving examples from Hebrew, Indonesian, Swahili, Chinese, Esperanto, modern Greek and German. Not so much modern and Greek and German because these are the more boring languages, but uh, <laughs> essentially um, this is not a presentation for those who are planning to learn these languages in particular, but uh, people who are learning any kind of uh, non-Indo-European language or uh, any language in which you have trouble with the vocabulary, you can probably apply uh, some of these uh, tips and uh, get your tutor to tell you the equivalent in other languages. Okay, so, so much for the introduction. Um, first, I would t uh, talk about uh, the suffixes that you can use for people. And what I found really useful in this context is to look at Esperanto suffixes for people. There are essentially three kinds. And the first one is the anto prefix, is a su suffix, is for uh, people who are currently doing something. So, a kanti is uh, to, si to sing, and if you say cantanto, it's someone who is currently singing. Then, uh, ulo is um, for someone who regularly does something, maybe as a hobby. So, cantulo is someone who maybe participates in a choir as a hobby. Uh, and isto is for someone who professionally does something. Uh, cantisto, uh, it would be a professional singer. Um, so that is uh, three different ways that we can think of people uh, who are somehow connected to uh, a verb or a noun that we can imagine. Uh, and I found that uh, this maps interestingly uh, onto Chinese. If you're, if you're interested in that, I wrote an article actually comparing Esperanto and Chinese suffixes uh, for people, um, because you can take a lot, uh, see a lot of parallels. But uh, in this uh, presentation I will look at various languages. So here's uh, Hebrew. Uh, we have an equivalent for the anto uh, suffix. I will always uh, write in uh, transliteration so you, like, you can compare more easily. Uh, so for example, mesaper would be uh, tells. This is the present tense uh, form. Mesaper um, is uh, he, t he or she tells. And then the same word also means a storyteller. Uh, or matril is uh, to start or he starts. Uh, and uh, matril is also uh, the word for beginner. Or uh, mishtatev is he participates or uh, as the particip participant. Then, uh, in Indonesian, you change the prefix from an M to a P, but it is uh, essentially the same idea. You have a word, uh, mengajar, which means to teach, and then uh, pengajar is the teacher. Membeli, to buy. Um, Pembeli, the buyer, Menjual to sell, Penjual the seller. Um, you can go from one to the other, except that in Indonesian you don't have this distinction between the, p the person who is currently doing something and the one who regularly does something or uh, the professional. So in some languages you will have this distinction and in some, uh, some languages you won't. Uh, in Hebrew you do have the distinction, that's why I started with Hebrew. Um, in um, Swahili, you have the same kuimba, uh, mimbaji, sikiliza, uh, sikilizaji. So um, you can kind of see a pattern. It's a bit difficult because of the vowel and non-vowel, but there again, you have sing, singer, listen, listener. Uh, in Chinese, you would use this with the jo, and I wrote it down uh, the, the character for it as well because in Chinese it makes a difference. So here you would uh, use the verb and then you add zhe for someone that uh, does something. Sanjia, sanjia zhe, ting ting, ting ting zhe. Okay, in this case, the, the common verb would just be ting and not ting ting, but um, in Chinese they like to be shorter, so for, uh, for the uh, most common verb you would use simply ting and then for the ting uh, ting for the noun, you need a longer word. But essentially, uh, you can remember that this jo uh, fulfills the same purpose. And I'm not saying to remember all this that I'm uh, saying right now, but simply to uh, to keep in mind that uh, if you're learning a language, you can look for this for this relation, and you should ask 
uh, your uh, tutor to tell you how how do I do this if I have a verb to listen how do I get from listen to listener how do I get from sing to singer how do I get from participant to uh, sorry from participate to participant uh, and uh, to learn the regularity in order to boost your vocabulary um, then for the Ulo, which is uh, someone who regularly does something, you have le sachek, sachkan, le rakod, ragdan. It's a bit more complicated in Hebrew, it always will be because of the root system, where the vowels sometimes get swapped out or sometimes disappear. But essentially the same idea, you add the an at the end, to go from play to player and dance to dancer. Um, in Swahili as well, you have the same pattern as before. Here in Chinese, you're more likely to see the jia ending, uh, jia suffix, hua, hua jia, paint, painter, uh, zuo wen, zuo jia, um, compose and uh, writer. And in the last category for professionals, uh, you have a different pattern in, uh, again in Hebrew. So Hebrew, Hebrew really, um, really uses uh, the same uh, three kinds of um, people that you can build based on the verb form. So here you have a bit of a problem with... Can I get a... Yes, okay. So here you have to think that in Hebrew only the consonants matter. So in a, in a verb stem like uh, Lin Hock, you have the N, the H and the G that will reappear here in N, H, G and here S, P, R, that's why I wrote them in, in capital letters so that you can recognize that they are still there. It uh, takes some getting used to. It's uh, actually uh, my, my biggest enemy in, in learning uh, Hebrew is to uh, one, to, to see these and uh, two, to not get co confused because the uh, words afterwards all sound the same in the hug so far. Um, they, they will all have the same kind of uh, pattern. Um, okay, so Another thing is you don't necessarily need to do this with verbs, but it can also be with a noun like uh, musik, musikai, iton, itonai. Um, so based on the word for music, you can make the word for musician. Based on the word for newspaper, you can make the word for a person who professionally works with newspapers, which is a journalist. And it's the same in Esperanto. Uh, with the isto, uh, you can say uh, gazeto is a newspaper, gazetisto uh, can be the uh, journalist, or musico, musicisto, um, or I don't know, any, any of the words uh, also work in Esperanto. Yes? When you say itonai there, mm -hmm. that specifically means a journalist working for a newspaper, or can they also be television or magazine? Uh, you'd have to ask an Israeli, but I think okay. it's for a newspaper. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, a newspaper. Just, Just newspaper. newspaper. Okay. <laughs> Okay, in Swahili you have the same, you can use a word like uh, physikia for physics and then you have uh, one of physikia for physicist. It's uh, maybe not uh, too surprising that you can uh, do that with the uh, foreign words that have entered the language. Kunyoa, uh, kunyosi, okay. Um, in Chinese it's more likely to be shi, in this case, the, uh, the shi uh, suffix, which looks like this one that you may recognize from lao shi for teacher. Li Fa Shi is a barber, and Lu uh, Shi is the lawyer. The problem is here that, again, you have a bit of a shortening, so the word for law is Fa uh, Lu, and then you get Lu Shi. Um, so in, it's, it's not entirely predictable, but if you know that uh, this, uh, that, works, that words uh, work like this, then you can, you can somehow guess them, and even if you can't guess them, you can remember them more easily.